Hi guys and welcome back to Part of Move. <clears throat> For today's episode, sorry about that. We will be uh, in the last team in Italy, uh, Napoli. Of course, uh, I don't literally mean the last team. Just the last team. We'll be doing a tactical and team guide on. Of course, if you haven't, if you've missed out the other episodes, uh, we did Roma, Juventus, Inter Milan, and AC Milan, and finally Napoli will be our last team. Very exciting team in real life. Um, one of the teams who are trying to challenge Juve for, you know, the title, uh, trying to end their dominance. So as you can see, just showing you guys exactly how I set up a team from the start to try and, you know, bring out as much success as possible from that squad. Uh, and um, really, uh, like I always mention, none of this is planned. As you can tell, this is why I show you the home screen, the inbox screen. I've done nothing. I've literally just skipped the uh, meetings with the with the you know chairman and whatnot uh, and the reason being is I can't if I plan these episodes it kind of defeats the purpose which is what I'm trying to show you which is you know what I do when I initially take over a team what I do how I look at the squad so one of the first things I do is try and get an opinion on my team so uh, my assistant manager try and get his recommendation it looks like it's initially set the three four three one two I think this is probably the way they play in real life uh, the 433 four, three is what my assistant suggests and we'll try and uh, see whether, you know, just keep that in mind, see if he's, if, if he's actually right or not. Uh, another thing I do is have a look at my staff, of course, some of them I'll get rid of, some of them I'll keep, depends on the team's uh, finances. Uh, but for now, the only thing we need to do is try and see an assistant manager, uh, not an assistant manager, a, a, a staff member whose ability we can trust, judgment rather, we, we can trust. So. Uh, my assistant manager seems to have decent, you know, one of the highest uh, uh, judgment of abilities in my staff. Uh, the head of youth development has a bit more judgment of a potential, a little bit better. But I'm going to go ahead and trust my assistant a little bit more, uh, just for the sake of this video, because, you know, uh, we're going to be using my assistant manager's uh, recommendations, basically. So, uh, for example, here... Uh, you know, these reports are already my assistant managers, so it makes sense to lean to him a bit more when it comes to judgment of ability. When we need potential, uh, when we need the judgment of potential, we can use our head of youth development. So one of the things I first do with my squads, of course, is to sort them according to ability. Uh, but first, actually, we'll be looking at who should actually be involved in the squad or not. I've already forgotten the assistant manager name, so Francesco. Uh, we'll be using his judgment. Francesco, where are you? wrong Francesco right Francesco okay so Christian Maggio is ready for Serie A Raphael ready for Serie A uh, Luigi Luigi is not ready so we'll move him just to the under 20s for the sake of this video but I should probably actually sell him uh, Royal Albiol and it looks like that's pretty much it I think that was the only player who wasn't ready so as I will always mention you need a squad of 22 players, a best 11 uh, who are leading players for the division and a backup 11 who are youngsters with potential of competing for the side. So we've got 23 players here, we'll see who we can get rid of, who we need to keep. And I think now is when we can quickly have a look at the under 20s and the under 18s and see if there's anyone chilling down there who actually has the ability to be ready for the team. So it looks like Luigi was the only one or rather is one of the highest players with ability in this under 20s and under 18s and he wasn't ready for the team so it's unlikely that anyone else would be. I think we can go back to the first 11. So we sort them out by ability, we'd pick the first best 11 according to my assistant manager's recommendation and try and make a squad out of this uh, and try and include as many of our best players as possible. So it looks like I think we can go through these players one by one. Jose Calion is a winger but also capable of playing as of course a striker i think uh inside forward we've got a allen who can play as a central midfielder or defensive midfielder uh hamsik central midfielder or attacking midfielder you've got uh cool libali i always mess up his name a center back as well uh i'm not even going to try and say that name actually maybe i should zielinski polish central midfielder uh, in Signy or Lorenzo, I always forget how to say his name to be honest. Left winger, probably capable of playing as a striker as well. Uh, Giorgino, centre midfielder or defensive midfielder. The reason why I'm not just trusting the initial position is because you know you might want to consider the other bit, the other, other positions they can play in where you can make your team basically. Uh, Mertens, left winger as well. Milik or Milic, maybe it is, I'm not really sure what it was. Uh, best striker, 
in the squad. Uh, Gulam or Gulam, Fauzi Gulam, I think, uh, left back. Um, and you've got Nikolo Mak Maksimovic. I've just ruined everyone's name basically, but he's the centre back, and it looks like we've got two centre backs, a couple of centre midfielders, wingers, and strikers. So it looks like my assistant manager's recommendation was not too far off. The problem is that you will have to make someone unhappy uh, in terms of the winger positions. Um, I think the 4-3-3 is your best bet. I think again, I think it's going to be a little bit like the Roma video if you watched it. Uh, if you didn't, then good, <laughs> basically, because you won't be bored. So it looks like your best bet is the 4-3-3, four possession based tactic and the 4-1-4-1 for a uh, direct style of play rather. So uh, initially what you'd like to do is pick the mentality of course so for possession based control standard or counter are your best bets is what suits possession based uh, tactics most but of course like I always say you can go into the other extremes you can go into attacking you can train them for overload you can train them for defensive you can train them for contain you can train them for anything you want really it's just counter standard and control suit possession based tactics more than anything so we're going to be going on control uh, in instructions, I like to keep it simple, like I always say, four instructions at best is what I do, three to five, um, but of course you can be, well I can explain it more in just a second. So I like to play lower tempo, shorter passing, be more expressive and run for positions. Uh, now the difference is, if you are a manager who likes to be a lot more um, detailed, I guess you could say, or likes to have a lot more instructions to try and control the team a bit more, you can definitely include more for the sake of uh, possession based, your, your possession based tactic. Uh, but I'd just like to mention, like I always do, that I've managed to get 60% possession using these instructions. So don't think you're going to get any more possession just because you've made more instructions. Uh, only include instructions that you'd like to see your team play in, basically. So, uh, if you are going to be more um, detailed, you can get rid of being more expressive, you can uh, retain possession, play our defense, work ball to box are all great shouts, look for overlap as well, something to consider, higher defensive line, offside trap, more closing down and even getting stuck in all things you should uh, keep in mind too. Uh, playing narrow is another thing you might want to consider to try and keep your team, uh, your players closer to each other as well as maintaining a good shape so that you're always keeping possession, keeping things ticking over. You can prevent short goalkeeper dif uh, distribution as well. That way you're stopping your opposition from uh, keeping possession. It would also, of course, mean that you're pressing a lot more. Um, but just keep an eye on that, of course, during the game. Now, uh, you... Uh, yeah, actually, I think we'll just do it the way I like to do it, just for the sake of the video, because we are, you know, I guess maybe pretending uh, that I'm actually playing with Napoli. Uh, for the, uh, the uh, not stand, I was going to say standard, for the direct style of play, your best bets are attacking and counter. Of course, like I said, again, you can do anything else, but for the sake of the video, we'll be doing attacking, and again, counter suits, counter, counter suits um, the style of play that we're playing with. So, again, it's really simple, higher tempo, more direct, be more expressive and roam from positions. Now, like I mentioned with the possession based, you're gonna want, if you want to actually, not gonna want to, if you want to have more instructions, you can get rid of roam for positions. You can run at the fence and clear ball to flanks are the best ones for more direct style of play, but you can do things like pass in space, hit early crosses. Um, well, so you can stay on your feet to try and keep your team shape a bit more even a deeper line and closing down less will not only draw in the opposition but also keep your team shape a bit more and that way you can hit them on the counter uh, and you can go full out wide if you want to you're naturally going to be a bit wider when you go more direct or higher tempo but if you want to do it all the way you can go wide completely wide as well uh, but again once more for the sake of the video run for positions higher more direct higher tempo and attacking um, so now we're just gonna have a look at who we can sell, who to keep it to sell, and uh, you know just to get to know our players a little bit more, and that way we're more prepared to give them roles. We've made the tactical instructions and the formation, but now we have to make a decision on where where we think we can get the best out of the team, basically. So uh, in terms of goalkeepers, you've got Pepe Reina, of course, very well known, leading player for the division. He's perfect. Rafael is a decent backup, uh, but I would say not good enough for the team. You should sell him and bring in a youngster with potential to compete with Pepe Reina. 
He's only out for four, uh, for 12 days to four weeks, so not too bad. I thought he might be injured for a long time. I was a bit worried when you see an injury on your goalkeeper. Thankfully, it's nothing. Maggio and Il Sayed Hisyaj. I don't know. We'll just call him Il Sayed. Um, looks like you've got the numbers, at least, in the right-back position. But in terms of your ability-wise, it looks like Maggio is only good. And uh, Il Sayed is a leading player, so it's perfect for us. And he could still improve. Definitely your first choice. And Maggio is a decent backup. Maybe just keep him until he eventually declines and decides to retire. Uh, just basically judge him based on performance. He's only good. Normally, I would recommend in other positions to sell him and uh, bring in a youngster with potential. But Maggio's on low wages and he doesn't have much value, uh, you know, in terms of trying to sell him. He does have the experience, so it's perfect. Uh, and uh, like I mentioned, in other positions, I'd maybe suggest it. But in the fullback positions, there's a real sort shortage of abilities, uh, you know, like world class type of players. Uh, and of course you'll need a lot to spend if you were to buy a great fullback. In left back though, it looks like you've got two really good options in in Ivan or Ivan uh, Strinic, a good player, so decent um, fullback again. If you can find a better left back then sell him maybe, uh, but again Golan will be your first choice anywhere anyway, so uh, Ivan is just your backup and he would be a decent backup. Uh, Golan a leading player, so perfect for that. You've got your fullbacks kind of sorted really, you just want to keep an eye on Maggio for declining. Ivan and Fauzi, Golan will be battling out for the next couple of years, uh, it seems. In centre-back, whether you're playing the 4-3-3 or the 4-1-4-1, you've got an ex excessive amount of centre-backs, just in terms of numbers. You, you have five, but you should only have four. Uh, now, normally I would say sell one, but it looks like Lorenzo is out for ages, basically probably the whole season, maybe half the season, um, and maybe you can look to sell him in January, but you won't be able to keep him, uh, you won't be able to sorry, sell him in this transfer window. Um, but let's just have a look at the ability, and then we can judge who to keep and who to sell. So, Roll Albiol, of course, you should keep, he's your leading player. Lorenzo's just a, a decent backup, a good player. Uh, Vlad, of course, is only a good player as well. Nicola, a good player only. And uh, Kulib Sorry about that. Koulibaly is a leading player. So it looks like your first choice is Koulibaly and Rual. Rual Albiol. Uh, so that means that any of these three can be sold and brought in for youngsters with, with potential. You've got tons of centre-backs out there that you can buy with potential... Uh, uh, and for cheap, so you might want to consider selling these players for the money that they can bring in 8 million here uh, 8.5 million here and 8 million here as well So you could get some decent money some decent wages off as well and bring in youngsters of potential who won't really care uh, About wages too much um, You've got a decent amount of money, but you're too close to your wages. So I think you should probably decrease that uh, Just to consider that but yeah Whether you're playing the 433 or the 4141 you'll want to have six central midfielders so uh it looks like he's a little bit short but maybe marco can play in center midfield can he he can retrain him there probably and that way you're okay with your numbers so uh it looks like amadou is your youngster with potential so definitely keep him hamsik is a star player definitely keep him alan leading i think your strongest positions are your central midfielder your central midfield georgino leading player and uh, Zelinski is only a good player so maybe uh, actually don't even consider selling him because he does have potential uh, so he is your youngster with potential which would be perfect just keep an eye on him if he doesn't fulfill his potential then you can decide to sell him Marco Rog another player with potential so it looks like your midfield would be the makeup of Hamsik, Allen and Giorgino um, and of course youngsters like Marco, Zelinski and Amadou would be fighting it out uh, for their game time basically. In your winger positions, you've got the perfect numbers in uh, the four here. Kalion, uh, Girinci maybe, Emmanuel, let's just call him Emmanuel. Uh, Mertens and Lorenzo here. Uh, it looks like Kalion is perfect. Lorenzo perfect. Perfect for Mertens as well. It's just Emmanuel, you might want to consider selling him. He is 31 years of age. Uh, if you sell him, it'll be perfect because then you can bring in a backup winger for Kalion because you've got three left wingers and you don't need that many numbers. So uh, possibly sell him and bring in a youngster with potential. Um, 
And yeah, that leaves us with our two strikers, Pavlotti and Milic. It looks like Pavlotti is only a good player, so you might want to sell him and bring in someone, another youngster to compete with Milic. Milic is already a youngster, uh, but yeah, it would be perfect to um, try and sell him, basically. Uh, have two youngsters of potential competing with each other for your first team spot. So let's try and make a squad now. Um, we've got to know our players a little bit better. And I think the perfect 4-3-3, like I always mention, is the inside forwards, the wing backs, and let's see here. So let's do that. This is the perfect thing for possession based sides, basically. So or in my opinion anyways, a lot of people have different opinions. Uh, we'll have a look at the team and see if they can, can play that, but I don't think so. Milic is a complete forward on support, he is okay as a false nine, but it looks like he's a lot more comfortable playing as a complete forward on support. So we'll change the false nine to complete forward on support. You do have a in inside forwards and your left wing is perfect, but Kalyon is a Rodimentor or rather more of a winger so I think you might want to consider playing as a winger. Rodimentor you really need a strong team shape to play that uh, and it's not really a role I'm familiar with so I will stick with the winger role here and a fullback here to complement him. In defensive mid we've got options that we said Alan, Giorgino and Hamsik and uh, it looks like you'd be wasting Georgina's vision as an anchor man. He's more comfortable as a defensive midfielder. Let's see if there's anyone else who can do that job. I think you'd rather use Allen. It makes more sense to use Allen as a defensive midfielder, um, not as an anchor man. He doesn't have the heading for it. Yeah, I think we'll have to tweak to defensive midfielder. And that would mean that leaves us with. Sorry, who was it that we did? It was Alan, wasn't it? Yep. So that leaves us with Giorgino and Hamsik. You're going to want to try and play Hamsik as his best role, advanced playmaker on attack. He does that incredibly well. Giorgino, though, has a good shout of doing that too. He does have the vision and passing. It suits him a little bit more. Um, but unfortunately, he's a little bit better playing as a ball winning midfielder, box to box midfielder, maybe even, or central midfielder on support, probably. I think your best bet is central midfielder on support uh, and that way Hamsik gets the best out of an advanced playmaker on attack and I think this is how your team should look. We don't have to consider the ball playing defender, you don't really have any players for that so it's just central defenders and pretty much this is how your team should be playing. The 4-5-1 or the 4-1-4-1 I like to say rather more. Um, I think Milic can play as a target man on support, you'd have to play wingers here so that means you'd have to retrain some of your players. Um, and that would mean, yeah, just keep an eye on like you know uh, who can be retrained where and what feet they can use as well. You don't want to play a left winger who cuts in on his right foot. Kind of defeats the purpose. It depends though. If you if you want to, that's fine. I just like my left wingers to play with left feet, so that way they actually go. They actually are playing as wingers and not inside forwards disguised as wingers. Uh, so we'll have to play football fullback on attack here, a wing back, a winger on support here. Now this is where your midfield might be suited a bit more for. You can play a deep line playmaker on defend here, a box to box midfielder here, and a central midfielder on attack, and that would be your perfect midfield. Now this formation suits your midfield a lot more, as well as your striker, you can comfortably play as a target man on support, we'll have a look at him in just a second. It's your wingers who will suffer, um, so it depends who, what, you know, who you want to bring the best out of. Do you want to bring the best out of your wingers in this formation maybe, but your central midfield are struggling or do you want to bring the best out of your uh, central midfielder and your wingers uh, your foot your flanks are struggling a little bit just a tiny bit not too much uh, and of course the target man Milik is more than capable of it and his, his backup is capable of as a target man as well so it kind of suits that a little bit more I think this team suits direct style of play a bit more in my opinion but again it's all about preferences uh, as you can see Milik can definitely play target man on support looks like he's a little bit more suited to complete forward on support though um, so yeah, we'll have a look at the youngsters, see, that will be the end of the episode basically. Uh, we'll just have a look at the youngsters, see who to keep an eye on for. Uh, Napoli, not really, not really having a strong set of youngsters. Now, I don't know whether that's because of the facilities or your head of youth development. Uh, 
um, but again some of these might surprise you so just keep an eye out I think you've only pretty much got these three youngsters to look out for Leonardo uh, Gianlui Gianluca uh, Sebastiano as well so that's a center back and two advanced playmakers one who can play as a striker and one actual advanced playmaker so just keep an eye on them obviously try and give them out on loan and whatnot um, but yeah, I think, I'm not really sure why you don't have too much to look out for. I think Napoli were the worst out of all the Italian teams we did, which is quite disappointing. You do have excellent training facilities, but the youth facilities could be improved on. So consider asking the board that after a couple of months. Don't do it in the beginning, they'll definitely reject because you're new. Wait until about, I like to wait until about October before making any demands. And of course it depends on your performances as well. You do have the capacity to try and make some money. Uh, your youth recruitment is poor as well as your junior coaching so it looks like maybe that explains why Napoli are poor your head of youth development is decent do not get rid of him until you're 100% sure you can sign someone better we'll actually have a look for you here um, so this is how I like to try and find my staff members there you go You've got some options by the looks of it I like to try and have, an, uh, you know, according to my league, so an Italian uh, head of youth development would be great. All three are Italian here, so that's perfect. You might want to consider the personality when you sign them because they will influence your youngsters. They're all fairly professional other than Mariano who's completely professional. Uh, so you might want to, I think you can take any of your picks off here. You might want to try and sign the youngest one to be honest, just for the sake of that he would be a staff member a lot. Like, a lot a lot longer I guess uh, the older staff members tend to retire as well so that definitely will be all for today's episode so if you did enjoy it, of course please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2017 content and as always guys thank you all for watching